Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. You know, a few weeks ago I did a video on this little digital angle finder and of course it's used primarily for setting the angle of your blades on your table saw or your sliding miter. But I thought, you know, it's an interesting little tool. What other things can I do with it? So today I'm going to show you all the things that you can do with this. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I invite you to do that. Let's have a look at what you can do with this little tool. So naturally the first thing that you would think of with these digital angle boxes is to set, for example, a table saw or a miter saw blade. Uh, but I never ever use this to set the vertical on it. I always use a steel square. It's quicker and more accurate. These are accurate, um, but for a starting point, I always use a square. But when you go to set an angle, and I've already zeroed it, so you set it on the blade, and, and at that point, you can move that to whatever angle you want. And of course, the other most popular place to use these digital angle boxes is on your miter saw. And in my case, this has an aluminum deck, so it won't stick to it, but that doesn't matter. Just put a little bit of pressure on it, uh, turn it on and zero it. And it does the same thing as, as magnetic. And of course the, the blade is steel, so you can just take that, move that over to the blade, and now you can tilt that blade back and forth to get the proper angle. So those are the two most common uses of it, but let's look at some others. Here's a quick trick if you want to use your digital box as a stop block. Now here's how it works, pretty simple. So all you do, let's pick an arbitrary number of uh, two inches, and I want to set my, I want to cut some little blocks at two inches. All I need to do is bring my fence over to there. I'm going to double check my measurement and there it is right at two inches. Now I can take this and move this anywhere along here and because my fence is aluminum it stays sticking to the bottom of the table saw and now I can turn my table saw blade on and cut as many of these little clips as I want. So I'm at my jointer here and it's aluminum. The deck is aluminum, the fence is aluminum, and of course this only sticks, this magnetic only sticks to steel. But look, there's a way that you can do that still. And on anything that's aluminum, all you need to do is put a finger on it and zero it wherever it is. I can't see the zero from behind. There it is there. So I've just zeroed it and I've just had my finger on it so that I make sure that it's not, there's nothing underneath it. The next thing I want to do, there's sometimes when I want to set the angle of my jointer fence at 15 degrees and it's awkward to do it with other tools but look if you have one of these it's still not going to stick to it even if there is a magnet there but look all you need to do is put a clamp on there just a quick release clamp you don't have to put any pressure on it because now you'll be able to read when you set that angle to 15 degrees and that's exactly when you would do that is at a sort of an odd angle like that if you're vertical Clean it again. You want to be using your steel square to make sure you're getting a perfect. It's quicker and easier and more accurate to use your steel square. But if you've got a, a bit of an odd angle that you want to use, this would work perfectly for that. Now, here's another place where you might find a use for your digital angle finder, and here's how and here's why. This is the grinder, obviously, and maybe you're setting up a sharpening tool or a sharpening jig, and you need to set it at, for example, 25 degrees is a very common sharpening angle, and there's a variety of jigs that you can make that attach to your grinder, and wood turners will know all about this. So how do you do this? Well, very simple. You find the flat 
of your the deck of your grinder set your zero zero your angle finder on that and now when you move this up to an area where you want to set an angle on whatever that angle might be now you've got a surface that you've zeroed to and you can set that angle and you might be measuring it out of a variety of ways of making that jig but this is a way of finding those angles for you so one of the first alternative places that I found this would be useful. At one point, um, a few weeks ago, I had a board similar to this that I wanted to put a 25 degree bevel on. And it's hard to figure out exactly where 25 degrees was. And I thought, well, I could use my inclinometer. And you know what? You zero it, turn it on, you zero it, um, and then instantly like that I can tell roughly where it didn't have to be perfectly at um, 25 degrees but even an idea of where that was and now I could go like that and actually start taking off and you can see I'm taking off just a, the tiniest bit there and that is like right on 25 26 degrees there's other ways of doing it but this was just a quick easy way of finding where that angle would be without going too far one way or another. So that was the first thing that gave me a clue that this could be used in many other places. My wider plane blades I sharpen on a piece of tempered glass with various grits on it and I sharpen most of mine at 25 degrees and this is the quickest and easiest way of setting up 25 degrees on this kind of a jig. Very simple. Let's have a look at how you might use a tilt box at your bandsaw. Now as I said earlier you always want to use a right angle steel square to check the table and the blade to make sure that they're at 90 degrees and you'll do that front and back to make sure that that's all set up properly. But look you might want to be cutting circles or maybe putting a bevel on an inside circle or an inside cut and you want to tilt that table and in this case you would be tilting the table one way or the other uh, and that's pretty common to do on a bandsaw and again pretty simple to do here because you would turn that on zero it to wherever it is and then just tilt the uh, angle of the the table to uh, five or ten degrees or whatever that might be and the drill press is pretty similar to the bandsaw where you would want to use a square to quickly make sure that your table and your bit are aligned. But once you've done that and maybe you want to tilt the table at one angle or another because you want to drill a little bit of an angle, again you would zero your uh, tilt box and set your table to whatever angle it is that you want and drill your hole from there. Well, this could be the most interesting application of one of these little angle finders that you'll run across. Many people from time to time need to make a tapered jig. Maybe you're making tapered legs uh, or you need some sort of a low angle taper and you're doing it on your table saw. Now, of course, I have one of these, which is it's actually a digital angle finder as well, just a different version. And for example, if I want to do a one degree taper, it is really hard. You basically cannot do it with something like this. But what you can do, for example, if you're going to make a tapered jig using a piece of plywood, and maybe it's a one-time jig. I've had to make one-time jigs lots of times. But look, here's what you can do. So this is just a piece of plywood. I'm, I'm just going to clamp it to the side of my the fence of my table saw. But look at this. Now you get, and you'll have to figure out how exactly you're going to be using this where it's going to be but you'll need a parallel piece of wood underneath here and look here's what you do you put your taper jig on there turn it on zero it and now and I'll show you a close-up of this now you can lift this up for example if I want a one degree taper There it is right there and it's perfect and you can see that all the way along. I could draw a line all the way along here 
and know that that's at one degree. And when I take this off and flip this down, because this board is parallel, I can draw the other side of the line underneath. So I'm not going to be wasting all of this wood here. I'll actually be able to draw the taper at the bottom here where I need it. So I thought that's a really interesting way of using these. So if I were going to find a one degree angle on here, what I would do is stick on one of my uh, blocks here, uh, one of my measuring blocks. That one's a little bit thick, uh, but something like that one. And I could move that back and forth and get a really accurate, there you can see I'm right on one degree. And now I could draw a line on the top all the way along and then do the same thing underneath and get a perfect one degree angle on that. Well, that concludes my video for today. All sorts of cool things you can do with a digital angle finder. And who'd have thought? You know, it looks like a tool for a one purpose, but there turns out there's lots and lots of things you can do with it. And maybe you've got some ideas you can submit. We can do some more of these with. But you know, while I'm on the topic of versatile tools, Another tool that I use a lot are these magnetic switches. I use these for all sorts of jigs, like this L-fence that I use on my table saw. Many, many different jigs. I've made a video for that, and that'll show up here. You'll be able to go there and have a look at that if you haven't already seen that. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.